Okay, let's talk about line for a few minutes. There's a couple ways to think about line, and I think first we should talk about it in terms of geometry, right? So in geometry, we were taught that a point is like the end of this pencil, right? Or maybe even this end of the pencil that's really small, that it can't be measured in right and left. A point has no dimension. So that's basically zero dimensions. It doesn't go right or left, it doesn't go up or down, it doesn't go back and forth, it has no length, yeah? So if we think about that like the end of this pencil lead, we've been told in our class that a line is a point in motion. So if I put this pencil down and I move it, then I've got something happening from here to here. So a line is a definition of this, the distance between two points right? Um, it can also be defined as each one of the points in between. Um, it can be defined like this. If I take this pencil and I say this is a point, then I add one dimension to it, then I'm going to a line. So we're talking about everything between this point and this point. So this pencil sort of illustrates the adding one dimension, right? So this is zero dimensions. This is one dimension, right? If we take a line and we add a dimension to it, we want to get two dimensions, right? Now a line, they say, goes back and forth, but that's just one dimension, which would be length, right? If I take a line, which would be, say, the edge of this piece of paper here, and I add a dimension to it, then I get a plane. And this has two dimensions. It moves in this direction and in this direction, right? So it has length and width or width and depth, one might say. So two dimensions is a plane. And then if we add a dimension to a plane, if we took this and said, here's a plane that moves in width and depth, but we add one dimension to that, then we might get a cube, right? That has height and width and depth, right? So we live in a three-dimensional world but we don't always see three dimensions, right? <clears throat> so we have something called elevation drawing. Elevation drawing is a two-dimensional depiction of a room or a floor plan, right? So it could be a wall. If we're looking at a wall, let's say we're looking at a wall in school, if we look at the, the back wall here, and there's a window here, and there's a window here, and there's a desk right here, the desk would be depicted very flatly, something like this, right? The desk we know relates to the cube. It has three dimensions, but we're only drawing two. We're drawing height, which goes up and down the wall, and width, which goes back and forth along the wall, right? So we can get the height and width of each of these windows, but those windows actually have a sill to them too. There's a depth to it, right? And we'll talk more about depth and creating a um, one-point perspective or a two-point perspective out of an elevation drawing and out of a floor plan eventually. But an elevation is a wall view in two dimensions, okay? You also probably know what a floor plan is, which is a two-dimensional rendition from the ceiling to the floor, right? So let's say this is a ceiling or a floor view. Sometimes people just call these plan views, right? So this same thing might have a window drawn in like this on that wall, and the desk would sit here right? And we might have other desks in the room. Let's say we have a desk here, and a desk here, and a desk here, and a desk here. In the elevation view of that, this desk would cover that right here, and so this desk would be drawn like this, right over top of that desk, right? And underneath that window right here, and then this desk over here would be drawn like so,
and then these desks would overlap that so we wouldn't see this desk behind that desk because this desk here if I were standing here and drawing an elevation view towards this wall right so I'm thinking about this is you looking down on me these are my shoulders and this is my head this is my viewpoint going towards this wall right so there's the windows here and here's the windows in elevation view right so we do have in the industry two-dimensional plan views or elevation views of what we're looking at so learning perspective is is learning that there's different ways of showing things there's also three different types of perspective right so there's um, isometric perspective for instance and there's true perspective which are things that we're going to learn but you need to be able to read elevation drawings you need to be able to read perspective drawings you need to be able to understand all of those so we'll be talking a little bit about that um, throughout the quarter in art school another way that we talk about line is line quality so quality is a tricky word right you always hear the word quality used with line in art school line quality but does that mean that one line is better than another can we have high quality and low quality line um, are we prejudiced about different kinds of lines what kind of qualities can a line have we know that a line could be thick and then we go to the opposite of that and we say thin right we know that a line can be dark and light we know the line can be straight and curved. So these qualities of a line are not talking about whether one is better than the other, right? But one might say a line is good if it's doing the task that we wanted it to do, right? So what did we mean to do with it? That's why we want to train our hand, right, and our eye to be able to have a line do what we want it to do. Yeah, there's a lot of people who say, I can't draw a straight line to save my life, right? Well, why would you want to? If your line doesn't have a little wobbliness or shakiness, um, should we put wobbly and shaky in here? Are those bad? What's the opposite of that? Confident, right? Um, strong line maybe is this a weak line I don't know is there a hesitant line sometimes we describe line in the way that it um, in sort of the attitude of the artist or the way that it goes down so could you draw an angry line or a seductive line or could you make a caffeinated line um, an agitated line, a calm line perhaps. So all of these are ways of describing line and saying one is better than the other is sort of moot. There's no point in arguing that. But if you want to draw a straight line, and many times you will because you want people to read your drawings clearly, right? Or if you want to draw a curved line or if you want to draw a confident line, yeah, some of these kind of things these definitions in here where you want to get away from an, a hesitant line and into a confident line, um, those are some things that we admire in, in art, right? Now, we also love scribbly and shaky and crazy and wacky line, right? So these we might say are more expressive and light is, or, um, art is always a balance between um, control and emotion, let's say, or between what I like to call balance, harmony, unity, and interest, um, dynamic, right? If you go too far on the interest and dynamic side, then you get clutter and chaos and mess. And if you go too far on balance and harmony, then you get boredom, stasis. Someone might say your drawing is dead, right? So 
if it's too boring, we want to add interest and dynamic. So it could be that we get too much structure and too much harmony and too much balance. We want to go in and we want to do a little bit of scribbling, eh? Or it may be that we have too much clutter and chaos and mess and we want to get balance and harmony and unity because we want to have a very good balance of these two things, right? So we would say good drawing would have a contrast of line and it would also have a unity of line, right? It would have a contrast of dark and light and it would have a unity of dark and light. It would have a contrast of straight and curved and it would have a unification of those as well, right? So I need to be able to add to my work a straight line. I need to be able to draw a confident line. I need to be able to draw a strong line in order to function in the business and to be respected by people because then it also like increases my wheelhouse and gives me more tools to draw with if I have a strong, confident, and controlled line, right? Confidence, strength, and control all sort of go on the unity, balance, and harmony side. Contrast, interest, and dynamic kind of comes along with the package. We all have the ability to do a shaky line, a wobbly line, a crazy line, a caffeinated line, an angry line, um, all those kind of things we can make. That brings us to the question of how. How do we draw a line? Okay. There's a few ways to increase the confidence and the accuracy of your line. One is to draw fast, right? So if I'm making a line, I'm wandering across the page and I just go a little bit and I start and stop and all that kind of stuff, I'm gonna get sort of a wobbly, shaky line. Whereas if I draw quickly from here to here, that line is much more straight than this line is here, right? We also, as we define light, line as being the distance between two points, we can talk about a goal. So if my line's to go from here to here, so I have much more chance of hitting this point if my eye is on that point. Therefore, what I do is I put my pencil at the beginning point and I put my eye at the end point and then I draw towards that. This is a very good exercise for you, and it's a very hard habit to break looking at your pencil point as you draw. So you've, you've been doing dot-to-dots since you were five or six, probably, or even younger. And drawing along your pencil line and looking at your pencil as you go is sort of like driving and looking at the wheel of your car, right? You can't do that. You have to look up ahead of you straight down the road at the place where you're going, and then you'll drive much straighter down the lane. So give yourself a point to work towards. Put your pencil here, put your eye over here, and draw towards that point. The other thing that I do to make a straight line is I do yoga, actually, <laughs> which may sound kind of silly, but you've got to be able to relax, right? Yoga just means breath. So one way to relax is to take a deep breath. If I take a deep breath and I get physically into my body and I feel more comfortable, I feel more present, I bring my attention to the paper, I take a deep breath and I draw a line. It's a much better line than if I draw it when I'm agitated or I'm worked up or that kind of thing. So this relates to the attitude of the artist, right? This relates to the two points that we talked about. And um, these are all ways to draw a better line. There's one more thing that I can do, and that is turn the page. Right? So if I'm really good at drawing a line from right to left, and I'm really bad at drawing a line from top to bottom, or from bottom to top, or from horizontal, or towards my stomach, if I'm drawing towards my belly, I'm turning my hand like this, and look at how I'm holding my pencil and hitting the page and all that kind of stuff. It's really awkward for me to draw like that. It's also harder for me to hit a point if I'm coming down at myself that way. So I'm best at drawing a line at a diagonal from lower to upper right, right? So all I have to do is turn the page to get that done.
right? So if I'm not really good at vertical lines, I just turn my page this way. And I can do that at a 45 degree diagonal. And whatever it is I want to draw, by turning the page, I can always be drawing in a way that's comfortable for me.